show. Oh, it's been exciting, hasn't it? So many award ceremonies this week. Now, uh, did you all watch the BAFTAs? Yes. yes. Please yourselves. Uh, <laughs> actually, there was some controversy at the awards. I don't know if, if you watch it, because uh, not all the really big shows won, especially that one with, uh, you know, the one with the bloke in the coma who thinks he's living in 1973? What's it called there? Uh, Strictly Come Dancing. That's right. <laughs> Didn't win. Didn't win. Uh, we, uh, we headed off to the after show party afterwards at the Natural History Museum. Oh, oh nothing says woo like having a party in a museum. <laughs> uh, lots of people there. Uh, X Factor winner Shane Ward, uh, he spoke to me. Can I take your coat? <laughs> uh, <laughs> looking well. He is, he is. Uh, I have to say, I had quite a bit to drink. Yeah, no, seriously. I spent 15 minutes talking to a prehistoric skeleton thinking he was Joan Rivers. <laughs> I thought she was quiet. <laughs> no, my favourite, my favourite award ceremony this week was the Greatest Britons 2007. Did anyone see that? Yeah. What the hell was going on there? It was an ITV. Oh, it's classy. You're going to think, who sponsored it? Little? It was... Oh. <laughs> Oh my God. David Beckham, David Beckham won the award for best global achievement. Yes. Oh, this year, global achievement. Next year, the world. <laughs> uh, Dame Helen Mirren, uh, she won the film award. Uh, when she picked up the trophy, she told the audience, and these are the exact words, it's great to be up there with fish and chips, bangers and mash, and a good old cup of tea. Disagree with she in. <laughs> Best value meal? What? <laughs> and of course, in the big award of the evening, the Queen was voted the greatest living Briton. <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look, that day will come. Mm, day off. <laughs> now, um, what... <laughs> <laughs> One newspaper said that the greatest, greatest living Britain awards, the Queen beat off Sir Paul McCartney. <laughs> so I wish I'd watched it now. <laughs> Here is the actual award she won. That. Now, do you really think the Queen wants that tacky piece of plastic? She owns Canada. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's got the crown jewels. You know, you're on your left is the Koh Noor diamond, the largest cut diamond ever produced, and next to that, on a velvet cushion, there's a bit of perspex shit that she got off Kate Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> but that's in the lights up. Listen, let's get some guests off. And she was wicked in the West End, the Professor Sprout and Harry Potter. Please welcome the magical Miriam Lovely. Woo! Oh, come here. Shrek the third, it's Prince Charming himself, Rupert Everett, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Oh. I'm so glad my feet touched the ground. They usually <laughs> don't. <laughs> now, uh, I'm talking about royalty there. Now, Rupert, at the moment, you have a slight royal connection. Have well, you I do, actually, yes. I've been working on a film, um, a remake of the old St. Trinian's films, um, in which Alistair Sim played um, a headmistress of a very bad girl's school. Probably no one knows those films anymore. And I'm doing the same role, and I was um, thinking about who would be my role model. And then I turned on the television, and there was Camilla, the Duchess of... What's she called? C Cornwall. I so. Having a drink, doing the garden, <laughs> smoking, doing all those things, wearing rubber gloves. And I thought, she's my girl. She's fantastic. And it is good. Here's a picture of you. See, it is very Camilla. <laughs> yes, it is. It's like, it's like a slightly feminine Camilla. <laughs> <laughs> the knighthood can't be far away now. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever met Camilla? No, I haven't. But I do love her. Well, actually. I have. And uh -huh. she's lovely. She looks lovely. She's Everyone lovely. says that. She's a cracker, honestly. She looks like she's, she's a real laugh. She is a laugh. She's yeah. a dear lady, honestly. Mm. And I get quite pissed off when people oh, are nasty God. about her. So I didn't ever say a word. Watch out, mate. <laughs> 
she really is a love. You mm. love her. And, I'm, yeah, and sure. she would come to the film and enjoy it, I Well, think. I hope she will. We're hoping to have a royal premiere. That would be fantastic. All right. We probably should edit this out, then. And it's happening at Christmas. <laughs> no, <laughs> only you'll be. You won't be invited. <laughs> and um, but the last time um, we met each other, uh, we went to see uh, the Queen of Country, we went to see Lovely Dolly Parton. Yes, we did. Yes. <laughs> and we, we got to meet her. Sort of. A sort of meeting, meet and greet. We had to queue for about half, well, 45 minutes. It's a long time. In a tunnel, you know. <laughs> and I'd been dying to go to the lavatory for ages. <laughs> so I farted and. Um... No, no. Well, Mir Miriam understates what she did. <laughs> well, I was irritated, you know. <laughs> She goes, we're standing in the queue, and there's like nice people here, all coming, with their dolly pins. And she suddenly goes, balls for fart, and it was the loudest fart I've ever heard. <laughs> well, I fart a lot. I think I must <laughs> like that. But I don't know why, but I think it brings people together. I think it's... <laughs> I think it's an encouraging human thing to do. We all do it. Yeah, we all do it, you know. Because so you're... Is it a... What's the thing you're having done? Is it a, a, col, a colon... I've oh, had yes. it done. Oh, you've had it yeah, done? No, actually, this is... Um, it's a sort of party political broadcast. It's on behalf of, of uh, colonoscopies. Because it's a wonderful way of checking what you've been eating. And, uh, and the, the harm it does to you. But... <laughs> It needs you to see? check it as it goes in. <laughs> and what do you do to get to see it? Well, what happens is you lie on your side and the doctor puts um, a lot of tubing up into your arsehole and... Um, <laughs> and, um, and then it all sort of comes out and he looks at it all the way up and, you know... And it's really worth having done, so please, please do it. Have you done it? No, but you're meant to, a uh, guy's meant to do it by 35, 40, apparently. I don't know why guys should be different. <laughs> arseholes are arseholes. Yeah. <laughs> Here's some uh, travelling news. Uh, what it is is, uh, you both, you both jet set, don't you? Go on planes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you travel all around the world. So, this might interest you. According to a new report this week, taking Viagra could help travellers overcome jet lag. Now, I know it's not a great image, a plane full of businessmen all dosed up with Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> that is the red-eye flight. Uh, whatever you do, <laughs> and you think, don't take the Viagra before getting on the plane. It's very hard to get on the plane if it looks like you've got a gun in your pocket. <laughs> No, no, honestly, it's an erect penis. Look. <laughs> oh, I still can't get on the plane. Um, and you don't want an erection for the whole flight, because you can't put your little tray down for the meal. <laughs> it's awkward. The stewardesses must be liking the in-flight announcements, though. Erections can be found here, here. <laughs> Remember, the nearest erection may be behind you. <laughs> Dear. A plain load of overexcited cocks. What would that look like? Oh, scoop. <laughs> <laughs> <Now, laughs> because I think there may be a theme to this evening's chat. <laughs> because uh, you, you've entertained people on planes. You were doing a film, was it in Morocco you were doing a film and you were travelling back? Yes, it was Poor Little Rich Girl. And it was a difficult shoot, and everybody was a bit depressed and tired, you know, <laughs> which you can get on, on films. And um, I thought, if I exposed my breasts, <laughs> it would cheer people up. <laughs> <laughs> in those days, they were, they were curvy. They, were, they had some life in them. They were like, <laughs> they were sort of Salvation Army now, you know, <laughs> raising the fallen, so to speak. But, um, <laughs> Um, and I didn't mean to be offensive at all. I meant to be, you know, caring and loving. And I just <laughs> took off my bra and streaked down the middle of the plane, right through, <laughs> first class, right through to, to economy. You know. and, um, it, was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Did you get a round of applause? Actually, no. There were just shocked faces. <laughs> <laughs> 
will do anything to cheer people up. That's very nice of you. It's all right. See you after. <laughs> <laughs> and where do you live now, Rupert? Do you live here or do you live in America? Or... I live here in London. All the time? Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you spend much time in, in L.A.? Because you work out of L.A. for a while, aren't you? No, I lived in New York, and um, I still do a little bit, and in, um, in Florida as well. But I prefer living here, actually. It's nicer. Well, now, uh, talk about Britain's in, in America, uh, Posh Spice, obviously, she's moving. Oh, yes. It is tragic that we still call her Posh Spice rather than her name. But uh, <laughs> she's, uh, she's been seen out and about with a certain problem. Now, um, it's obviously a little colder in L.A. than we thought. Um, <laughs> I guess her problem was wearing a one leg of tights as a top. Uh, <laughs> but she's no fool, because she then bought these, right? Um, I've got some. These are called petal tops, right? And what you do is you get these and <laughs> you, you do that, you see, and you put them on the thing. It's like, you know, for a non-slip in the bath. Right. <laughs> Seriously, you do. Uh, do. Do we have a picture of her with them on? There they are, see? Is what that to doing? stop um, jo jogger's nipple? Is it, it, would, it would stop that. Jogger's nipple? No, it's not to stop it being seen, right? But I must say, I think the nipple was less obvious than the great big <laughs> petal thing. Maybe they're leaking. <laughs> Is she pregnant? Well, she might be. No? no, but she's had a bunch of babies, hasn't she? <laughs> Do you want some leaky lady? <laughs> For sure. Oh, I can see. There you go. There you go. You don't, you don't have to put them on now, but they're there for later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you don't drench the back of his head. <laughs> Love it. She just had a baby, she claims. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, how old's your baby? She's three months. Three months? Oh. Who's looking after the baby tonight? My mother. Your mother. My grandma, yeah. Oh, how cheap. <laughs> now, <laughs> Talking, talking of the Beckhams, talking of the Beckhams, uh, did you see where David Beckham is uh, building up a collection of avant-garde modern art? Yes, he hopes to amass a valuable private collection. It really is a race, isn't it? Who's going to get Beckham's money first? Art dealers or the Church of Scientology? Yeah. Can't decide. <laughs> now, uh, David, David loves art, and according to one paper, he recently gave Victoria a painting he bought for £250,000. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're so lifelike, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> now, one the newspaper asked David if he liked uh, Raphael and uh, Donatello, and uh, <laughs> Beckham replied, I do like all the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Beckham's not the only footballer to be good at art. Uh, Wayne Rooney is also a gifted painter. <laughs> You were interested in art as... Were you a teenager when you, you worked as a, a life model? When I was at school, I earned some money as a nude model. And um, I wrote to Augustus John, who was a very great painter that I saw on television being interviewed. And um, I offered myself as a model to him. And for some reason, my parents allowed me to do it. I don't know... I don't know why. So they sent you packing off to Augustus John's house by yes, yourself? They, no, they took me there and dropped Where me at the it? door in uh, Fording Bridge in Hampshire. Mm. So I just, I just had a pair of knickers and a top and, you know, my school uniform, I think, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what were your parents thinking? I don't know, because they were very respectable, believe me. And I... Augustus John then was about 80, 87 or 88, I think. And it's not often that an 88-year-old will see a nude girl of 17, you know, in his own home. <laughs> and he said, um, Come in, come in, come in. He's a great big fellow in a boiler suit. And um, <laughs> he really did. And, uh, I see your parents driving away. They left <laughs> And he says, right here, take off your clothes. 
And so I did, quite quickly and decorously. And, uh, and then, that, this was the bit that was a bit unexpected. He looked at me, sort of smoothing his beard. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Um, <laughs> and then he said, climb that ladder. <laughs> normally climb ladders clothed, but never mind. <laughs> anyway, I sort of got up, went up the ladder, and well, not much you could do on the ladder, you know. Sort of one, one foot on one rung and the other foot on the other rung, so I was a bit spread out, you know. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> and he drew me, and, and then I came down the ladder. <laughs> I was 16. Oh, when I went to, I, I was sent on the, an exchange course to yeah. Paris uh, when I was 16, and my family were very worried about me. They thought I was um, living a, a life that was too louche. And um, they sent but me to um, a very respectable family in um, Paris, um, in just on the Bois de Boulogne. And the first afternoon I got there, the madame of the family said, Oh, Rupert, you would may maybe like to take a walk now in the Bois for the afternoon? And I said, OK. And I went out into the Bois. <laughs> And I'd been living a very bad life in London before. My mother was adamant that I was, you know, going to pull myself together and get everything right. But nobody knew that the Bois de Boulogne, which is the big main park in Paris, is, is the sex center of France. <laughs> Not only sex, drugs, everything. Everything you want bad can happen there. There's all the bad policemen, all the Brazilian she-men, all the hookers, all the... everything. So I was walking through the Bois de Boulogne, do, 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 this, <laughs> and I came across this van. And it was like juggling up and down. And inside there was... Ding, 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 ding. This is a fascinating van. And then this door opened and this woman got out, this six-foot woman with huge black hair, a big fur coat, enormous breasts in a kind of tiger skin um, uh, bikini. And she went to the back of the car and she opened the door. And the whole of this van inside was a kind of a boudoir. It had a glitter ball on the ceiling. It had uh, <laughs> tiger skin walls and had a pink bed on the floor. And then she stood beside it and she saw me and said, Hey, you, uh, you want sugar? And she opened her coat. And in her bikini, she had the most enormous thing. <laughs> And if, as if that wasn't enough, because she obviously saw my look of horror, she said, and I got sugar too, and she turned around. <laughs> she had these little old kind of goat's haunches. <laughs> and um, I became friends with this girl. Uh, and she was called Delphine. And my whole exchange course I spent sitting in the front of her truck while she beat men up in the back of it. <laughs> and it was an extraordinary uh, trip, really. <laughs> you my friends. Then she died. I mean, it, was, it had an awful ending, the story. Uh -oh. she, she moved her truck <laughs> in the end to... Um, she decided to get out of Paris. Yeah. She thought she'd go and work in the countryside. And she got shot by farmers. I don't know why that's sort of funny. It's but not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah, she was found shot by farmers. Well, riddled with bullets, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not funny. It's not funny. No, it's not funny. Here's an interesting story. I don't know where to go with that. Here's an interesting story. Oh, actually... <laughs> it's quite funny. This is the next story. But a, a granny... <laughs> a granny suffered from headaches, right, went to the doctors and found that she had a bullet in her head. Oh. You see? It's all linked. <laughs> uh, now, I'm no medical expert, uh, but I believe the headaches could have been caused by the bullet in her head. <laughs> uh, they could, of course, have been also caused by the frisbee in her nose. <laughs> uh, that looks quite painful right there. So according to the son, she then, when she saw this x-ray, she then recalled being shot in 1943. <laughs> Because you could easily forget that. <laughs> Went to shops, uh, <laughs> bought bamboo shoots. Shoots? What does that remind me of? I don't know. <laughs> I remember lying in a pool of my own blood. Went to the library. I don't know. <laughs> uh, eventually, 
<laughs> Eventually, the doctors found the rusty bullet. Can't have been fun looking at Granny's rusty bullet hole. But then... <laughs> here, here she is. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> she's fine. Her name is... Jin... Jin Yang Yang. <laughs> it's like the sound of the metal bullet hitting the metal thing.